Hi there, Sandra here from the Chauvin's Nest. Here's my top five favorite fall DIYs. My first project today is using these little canvas tote bags from the Dollar Tree. One is a taller one and then one is sort of a fat one. What I've decided to do is paint some grain sack stripes onto these bags. The first thing to do is to line the bag because I don't want the paint to seep through to the back of it. I'm just using some regular printer paper and I'm going to tuck it in as far as I can to make sure I cover everything that needs to be covered. Using some masking tape, I'm going to put one piece of tape right down the center of the bag. This is going to provide me with the first part that's going to get painted but I need to use this as a spacer to get the right dimension. I'll be adding two more pieces of tape on either side of this one, and then I'll remove this one because that's the part that's going to get painted. I'm using folk art chalk paint in the color Maui Sand. I get this at Walmart, although right now there's not a whole lot of supplies available at Walmart in their craft section. I'm also just going to use a little paintbrush and I'll paint the stripe fully enough that all of the fabric is covered, but if there's a little bit of white peeking through, that's okay. It will look a little bit more distressed that way. You don't have to wait for the paint to dry. You can remove the tape very carefully and check out that really nice, clean, crisp line that you've created with the tape. I just love doing reveals like this. It's my favorite part of any project. The first coat of paint is dry and now it's time to add the additional stripes on the sides. What you do is take another piece of masking tape and you're gonna go and cover about a quarter of an inch on either side of this big stripe. So you wanna make sure that the masking tape is turned over so you can see how much of the white you're covering up. Then another piece of masking tape gets put about a quarter of an inch to the outside of these pieces of masking tape to provide you with space on the bag to create another stripe. I also wanted to share with you that today's video is part of a fall DIY challenge hosted by my very good friend Sonia over at Domestic Diva DIY. I will have Sonia's channel in my description box below along with the playlist link. Go check out that playlist, you're sure to get inspired with tons of fall decor ideas. So the paint's dry on the little bag and I'm going to stuff it using just some lined paper that I had hanging around the house. I don't have any kids in school anymore so I can just go ahead and use up the scraps that I had. What I want to do is be able to stuff this little bag fat enough that it's going to be nice and round but I also want to be able to still close it at the top. I've got enough paper stuck in there and now I'm just going to squish the little corners in and push it and form it until I get the shape I like. I've also decided then to take these two handles, I'm sorry that it's a little bit off screen, and just tie them into a nice tight little knot and that will just keep the top of the bag together. I then went out into my garden and found a nice thicker piece of wood that I was able to cut down and make the stem for the pumpkin. I'm just going to take a little bit of twine and tie a couple of strands around the pumpkin just to kind of mimic those little vine strands that you see coming off the pumpkin stem at the top. I'm not using any glue or hot glue in this project because I want to be able to reuse these bags for different seasons. I'm thinking that I could probably do something with it for Christmas, so stay tuned to that in a couple of months. My second project for you today is using this tin that I picked up at my local Dollarama store. I'm just using some white latex paint and I'm going to give it one coat. 
It's going to be streaky and that's okay. I want this to look old and distressed so I'm actually not going to bother giving it a second coat because the effect that it looked like when it was dry for the first coat was exactly what I was looking for. So here's a quick look at how the bucket looks just with the one coat and I decided to put some grain sack stripes on this as well. The top rim of the bucket is still gray, so I wanted to do the bottom rim of the bucket the same way. I'm just using the charcoal paint and just gently going around the bottom edge. While I wait for the stripe to dry, I'm going to take these little pumpkins that I had painted gray for a previous project and using a fine tip paintbrush, I'm just going to mark out the ribs of the pumpkin and give it more of a farmhouse rustic feel. Using some of this white latex paint and a little drop of the dark gray, I'm going to mix up a lighter gray color that I'd want to use for some acorns that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. The colors I'm using this year for my fall decor are some muted oranges, something really darker, not too bright, and gray, green, and white. I'm using more modern farmhouse fall colors and I thought these acorns would look really cute painted gray. I have a bunch of supplies for fall decor, some pumpkins, apples, pine cones, acorns, all sorts of things. And instead of going out and purchasing new picks from the dollar stores or from Walmart, I decided to make my own. And I do this quite often. The one thing that I'm able to do with these is I don't have to glue anything in. I took some sticks from my backyard, broke them, poked holes in the bottom of all of these styrofoam pumpkins and gourds and acorns, and I was able to just add some stem to them really easily. I've got some pears and apples, and I think they're gonna look really cute in the display that I'm going to arrange inside the metal bucket. I got these little pine cones last year, end of season clearance, and they were just in the area where there were fillers. I believe I got them at Pier 1, which is now unfortunately out of business, but I will need to glue these onto the wood stems, which is okay because I've got a ton of them, and if I need to reuse them, I can just simply cut off that wood stem. Here's a quick look at the assortment of picks that I just created. Using some styrofoam that I had left over from a big purchase, I think it was a TV or something, I broke it up into small pieces and just squished it down into the pot. I'm going to start using the picks to create my arrangement. I'm also using some boxwood lamb's ear and some other cotton picks and some more pine cones just to fill things up really nice and full. Right about here is when my tripod broke and my phone fell over and I was no longer able to continue filming how I put this together. So I hope you get the idea from the pictures. I hope you love this video and you like that grain sack striping as much as I do. You'll probably see it in more projects coming up.
The DIY I am going to share with you today is a pumpkin patch farmhouse sign. This is going to be made from this placemat, which is actually a hard on one side and cork on the other side. It came from Dollarama and you can see here that I have already made it over once. I'm going to make it over again. I'm just taking some sandpaper and sanding down all of the lettering so it doesn't show through the paint when I go over it again. Originally, I had glued on the lemon picture, so after I sanded it, I was able to just grab that paper and peel it right off. Made it so much easier for me. I'm going to start by using this Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Maui Sand. It's a really beautiful dark gray, and I'm going to give this just one thick coat, and then I'll let it dry. The second step is taking some country gray chalk paint, which is a little bit of a lighter gray color, and I'm just gonna dry brush around the edges a bit. I don't need to go all the way into the center because that's going to be painted a different color. Next, I'm going to use some white chalk paint and I'm gonna start in the middle and feather it out to the end so there's not so much white paint at the edges. I want more of the white paint in the center and less of the white paint on the edges. So it's going to be a bit of a dry brushing on the edges, but nice and solid in the center. I am sure that there are going to be a bunch of YouTube creators participating in this challenge. What I'd love for you to do when you're done with my video is click on that playlist link that's down in my description box. Grab yourself a cup of coffee or some tea and get comfy. Watch all of that Pinterest inspiration. You are sure to find some inspiration yourself to create your own home decor, but if nothing else, it'll be beautiful to watch. Here's a look at my Pinterest inspiration. This is a cute sign. I love the weathered look of it. It's very farmhouse and the muted greens and grays are just perfect for the fall season. Now that all the paint is dry, it comes time to actually put the letters on. I don't have any stencils to use for these letters and I don't have a Cricut. So I decided to do some freehand lettering. I'm not gonna bore you with watching me pencil line all of this out, but I will show you in a minute how I fill it in. The pencil lines are kind of hard to see, but in a close up here, you can kind of see that I've got them lined up there and ready to go. I'm using my fine tip craft smart paint pen in black, and I'm just going to start doing the letters as best I can. I've got my iPad sitting next to me so I can see how the letters look and I'm just going to go for it. So it took me about an hour to do all of these letters now. It probably would have taken a little bit less time if I wasn't watching TV in between. But I didn't want you to have to sit through all of that. I think the letters turned out pretty nice. I am happy with how they look so far. I'm just going to finish off these bottom letters, which are in more of a handwriting. And then I'll add in the pumpkin. I'm using my Craft Smart pen again to color in the head of the arrow, but then I'm going to switch to my thicker point and do the line of the arrow all the way across. Now I'm going to paint on the pumpkin. It is penciled in there and the color I'm going to use is sort of a soft mossy green color. It's not too dark and I'm just going to use an artist brush and then make it look like it's been stenciled on. Pumpkins are actually not that difficult to draw. You start off with an oval sort of an egg shape and then you draw some 
quarter moon shapes or some banana shapes on either side of it and then add a few smaller shapes up on the top and you've got yourself a pumpkin. Don't forget the stem. I'm really happy with how my sign is turning out. That green pumpkin is probably my favorite part of it. I love that mossy green color. It's my absolute go-to green color because it's just so soft and muted. What I'm doing now is taking my white chalk paint and a dry brush and I'm going to need to distress those really dark bright letters and numbers and the arrow. On my inspiration it's really weathered it looks like some of it's peeling off or maybe that it's been sanded off but i didn't want to do any sanding because i didn't want to take off any of the paper that's on this actual placement the other thing i'm going to do though is i'm going to use my brush and stipple some of the paint on so it's not just brush strokes that you see it's more of a stippled aged look and it really adds to the character of the sign. Here's a side-by-side -side look of the original Pinterest inspiration on the left and my duplication on the right. So I'm going to start out with these little jack-o'-lanterns that came from Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. There's five in a pack. These little orange ones I picked up at Dollarama. They're little thank you cards, but I don't end up using them for this craft. I'm also taking some little squares of really thin cardboard. You'll see later on that I'm working with two pieces of cardboard for each pumpkin. You actually only need the one. I did have an idea in my head of what I was going to do with these little pumpkins, but then realized I had a previous idea that I liked better. So I really only needed to glue on one piece of the cardboard. Here's where I glued on both pieces of cardboard, which wasn't necessary, but I am going to show you that anyway, because that's how they turned out. So I'm gluing them just with some hot glue, one on the back and one on the front, basically just covering up that jack-o'-lantern face. Here's what I wanted to do originally. I'm taking a Dollar Tree Buffalo check bag and I'm gonna cut out pumpkin shapes and glue them on one side of the pumpkins. I've cut out three pumpkin shapes and what I'm going to do with the back of those shapes is paint them with just some white latex paint and then the buffalo check will go on the front. The other two pumpkins will get both sides painted with white. The three buffalo plaid pumpkins are now glued on to the wood pumpkins and because this buffalo plaid plastic is really bright and shiny I'm going to take my matte Mod Podge and give it one coat just to dull the shine down just a little bit. It actually works out really well. For the two white pumpkins I'm going to dry brush some black onto them, give them more of a rustic look and then I'm also going to use a fine artist's brush and just put in some of the grooves to make it look more like a pumpkin. Today's video is part of the DIY Mommy's Fall DIY and Decor Challenge. Christina has an amazing channel fantastic DIYs. She has so much imagination and creativity. You've got to go over, tell her I sent you and hit that red subscribe button. Next, I'm using some jute twine all around the edges of the pumpkin. I want to cover up the cardboard and the wood and just make it look more finished and high end. I'm just using hot glue and placing the twine and gluing it in a few spots all the way around just to make sure it's secure. 
Now I'm going to assemble the garland and what I've done is taking four strands of jute twine and I think they're probably about four to four and a half feet long. I tied a knot at both ends and this is what I'm going to use to glue on to the back of my pumpkins. I wanted the jute twine to look a little bit thicker but I didn't want to use jute rope because I thought it would be just too much. Here's my little pink silicone fingertip from the Dollar Tree, really handy when it comes to wanting to glue little things like this especially fabric and sometimes plastic and paper gets really hot with hot glue. I'm going to continue gluing the rope to the back of the pumpkins leaving about five to six inches of rope in between. I looked at the garland and I felt it needed a little bit something in between. So I have these little acorns that I collected from my front yard. I have a beautiful oak tree and sometimes the squirrels will leave me a few acorns, but most of the time they eat them all up so I can't actually harvest any. But I've got some so I'm going to add a couple of them in between the pumpkins just right on the jute twine. I also wanted to embellish a little bit more with a buffalo plaid shopping bag. So I'm cutting about a one and a quarter inch strip. I'm just taking two of the little squares and I'm going to cut a long strip and I'm going to create some little ribbons or dovetailed little pieces for the banner. I'm not quite sure what you would call what I'm making, but I think they would be like the tails of a ribbon. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut some pieces and then I'll show you how I put them together. I'm not sure if all of you would make these this way, but this is the easiest way that I figured out to make them. I've got two eight inch strips here. One eight inch strip will be enough for one of the tails. I'm cutting a V into the ends of them so they have that dovetailed look. And then I'm going to take one of the strips, find the center and then twist it just so it comes around twice. So basically I'm going to twist once, twist twice, and there I've got both of the colors showing up really nicely there. And that's what I'm going to glue onto the acorn area of the garland. When you're done watching my video, I would appreciate it if you could click that playlist link and go see what all the other YouTube creators have made for this challenge. You are sure to be inspired. For project number two, I picked up two of these little topiary pumpkins from my Dollarama store. They were only $4. They're ceramic. They're really high quality and I just love them. The one thing I don't love about them is the orange color. I'm doing more neutral colors in my fall decor, more of a farmhouse style. So I decided to give these a couple of coats of white chalk paint. I'm also going to fill in the lettering that's on here because it's grooved fairly thick. But what's going to happen is you're still going to be able to see the words. So I'll probably use these for Thanksgiving as well as just for fall decor. The white is dry. I've got a couple coats on here and now I'm just taking some black paint and I'm going to just paint the undersides of these leaves anywhere where I got some white paint on them. I'm also going to do a little dry brushing on the top of the leaves. I don't mind the green but there's a little bit of orange in there so I just want to give it a little bit more depth and color. The last project I have for you today are these shutters. I painted these gray and distressed them white last year when I created my Dollar Tree faux window design. I will have that video linked down in the description box. But they've been up there for a year. I like the gray, but I really wanted to do them white. So they'll get a couple coats of a DIY chalk paint just using latex paint and some baby powder. That will be down in my description box, the recipe, if you want to see how I do that. And then I'm going to distress them with some black. This is how I dry brush. I take a little bit of paint on the brush and then I dab it off. 
Then I start dry brushing, which means just dragging the brush along your project with a very light touch to start, just so you have more control of how much paint is gonna actually get on there. Once you're comfortable with it, you can just start layering on more color to give it more depth. You can go into different areas of it, maybe a little bit more on the edges. In a moment, you're gonna see me just run that brush right up and down those wood shutter pieces. And that's just gonna give it a really cool distressed look. Here it is. It just looks so neat having that distressed look. It just looks so natural. Here's the space now. I did end up adding a shelf around Christmas time because I wanted to put more things underneath this window and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. The pumpkins turned out absolutely beautiful. I really love them and I've got the letters turned towards the back. I'm going to leave them like this for fall but closer towards Thanksgiving, I'll probably flip them around so you can see the words. I hope I'm starting off with this little wood plaque that I picked up at the Dollar Tree in their Crafter Square section. I also have a pack of these cute little thankful napkins that came from Dollarama. I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do with this. Yep, I'm going to Mod Podge it right on top of the square and then I'm going to have a sweet little farmhouse sign that'll be perfect for my tiered trays. I'm going to apply a thin coat of matte Mod Podge just onto the interior square and then apply the napkin, press it down and then give it another coat of Mod Podge on top. Next, I wanted to frame out the sign a little bit nicer. I did like the natural wood color, but I thought since it's Thanksgiving and fall, a nice deeper color would look better. So I have some burnt umber, acrylic paint, and some water, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stain all the way around. When you're using acrylic paint and water, it's really easy to be able to control the amount of stain that you're putting on. If you want it lighter, add some more water. If you want it darker, add some more paint. I think it turned out really cute. Next, I'm going to be working with these little white buckets. They're available at the Dollar Tree in the wedding section in a pack of two. And I love these little mini buckets for tear tray decor. They're just the perfect size. They're so adorable. The first thing I'm going to do is cut down a couple of little pieces of styrofoam and wedge those right into the buckets. Next, I'm going to use this Excelsior. It's aspen wood that's shaved into these long strands and they curl really nicely. I thought it looks like a little bit of straw or hay. So I'm going to be putting little clumps of this on each of the buckets. It was $3 on sale at Walmart. I'm just using some hot glue on the styrofoam and then I'll very gently press the hay or straw or whatever you want to call it right down into the bucket. I found these cute little apples in my stash of Thanksgiving and harvest and fall stuff. So I'm just trimming off the stem on the largest one. I'm going to use some hot glue and make a little topiary out of them by gluing the little one on top of the big one. I've trimmed down a little piece of bamboo skewer and I'm going to put some hot glue and just push that right down into the apple. This actually already had a hole so it was really convenient. Once the glue dries, I'm just going to poke it right into my little bucket. I thought the apples would look cute with some little leaves sticking out. So I'm just trimming off a little bit of a larger leaf and I'll just use hot glue to add the leaves on. If you've been watching my fall videos, you'll notice that I've been using these Dollar Tree cookie sheets for a lot of my projects. I had some little pieces left over, so I decided to cut down some little squares and make signs for my little buckets. 
Right here, I'm just folding in the edges because once you cut it, it's fairly sharp. You can cut yourself. I did actually slice my finger. It didn't bleed, but it was just like a paper cut at one point. So I always make sure to fold down all of the edges so not to hurt myself. Using a fine tip marker, I'm gonna write the words you pick. Then I just cut another piece of skewer and I'm going to glue it onto the little sign and poke it in the bucket. For the second bucket, I'm going to use these little wheat pieces that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut down the stem into a few different lengths and then attach each of the wheat pieces onto the stem and stick them into the bucket. The wheat stems also have these little grasses, so I'm going to trim them down and add them into the bucket too. One more thing that I'm going to add to this little bucket is a tiny little pumpkin that came off of a garland that I grabbed at Michael's, I believe for 40% off. Um, it was all their fall items. Anyway, he's really sweet and I'm just bending the little wire there and then I'm just going to hot glue it on. I added another little sign with the Dollar Tree cookie sheets and I think he's just adorable. This next craft is really super cute. I'm taking these Dollar Tree wood popsicle sticks and cutting them in half. What I'm going to do is use them for turkey feathers. So some will be in half, some will be a little bit longer, some will be shorter. I'm not going to be cutting off the rounded edge. This is a little piece of something. I really honestly don't know what this little round thing is. It came in a filler bag from Pier 1 Imports last year. There's a seed in it, so it's some kind of acorn or nut. I don't know. Anyway, absolutely beautiful. What I'm going to do is make that the body of my turkey, and then I'm going to add the popsicle sticks on the back just with hot glue and make those the turkey feathers. I'm going to continue adding sticks of different lengths. I'm also going to layer some of them and then just keep adding until I get the look I want. Here's the little turkey body. For the turkey's head and neck, I'm using a small bead first. Then I'm going to glue a large bead and I'm going to then take a pip berry from this Dollar Tree garland and glue it on for his nose. I also made a couple of other turkeys, one with some feathers on the back, which were actually just little pieces of leaves that I cut. And this one is using a pear as a body. And I'm just taking some of a honey brown color and some water and making a stain and staining these popsicle sticks to make it look just a little bit different than the one that's natural. This last project I think is my favorite. The reason I picked up this Excelsior in this wood kind of stuff is because I was looking for raffia, but I couldn't find any anywhere. So I'm just got a square little styrofoam block and I'm gluing some of this Excelsior onto it. I'm gonna do all the sides this way. Now I'm taking a piece of twine and I'm going to tie it around the hay bale. I want this to kind of look like the hay bale's been wired together because that's usually what happens. But back in the day, I'm pretty sure they just used another piece of hay and just tied it up. So I'm gonna put two of these on just to hold everything in place a little bit better. Using my scissors, I'm gonna give this hay bale a little bit of a haircut. He's looking pretty raggedy, so I'm just gonna trim off any of the pieces that are sticking out too far just to give him more of a square look. I've got two more of these little mini pumpkins that I'm going to glue right on top of the hay bale. And I'm also going to make a little tin sign for this hay bale. And I'm just going to put on pumpkin patch.
I'm going to glue it onto a skewer just like I did for the two little buckets and then stick it into the hay bale. Absolutely adorable. I just love this little guy. I really this is a wooden toolbox caddy that I picked up at the thrift store for $4.99. Look at those pretty little ivy leaves. It's actually not a bad looking crate. It's in really good shape. And I decided that instead of painting it white this time, I'm going to do something different and preserve the look of the wood. But I do need to get rid of those green ivy leaves. So I'm taking it outside and giving it a good sanding with my sander. It's taking off all of that green paint really nicely. And it's also going to give me down to a little bit more of the bare wood. So when I want to stain it, it's going to take the stain a lot better. I'm back inside and I'm just going to clean it up with a damp rag, get all of the dust off it, and then I'll let it dry for a couple of minutes. The first thing I'm going to do to this box is use my bare antique wax, which is like dark brown, and I'm going to take a soft rag and just apply it on and rub it in. And this will give me a little bit of a darker finish. It'll accentuate all of the nooks and crannies and some of the knots that are in the wood. And it'll just bring out the beautiful look of it. Today's video is also part of a challenge that's hosted on a seasonal basis by Hillary over at Old World Home. If you love all things thrifting, some vlogging, back to school things, end of summer, renovations, you name it, Hillary does it. If you have not seen her channel, please go over and take a look. I'll have her link down in the description box. I'm really loving the look of this, but I think it should be a little bit darker yet. I'm doing all the way around the inside, the handle, everything. So you can see a little bit of a color difference, but I wanted it to be even a little bit more rustic and deep. I let the wax cure for about an hour and now I'm taking a dry brush with some black chalk paint and I'm going to just give it a dry brushing. This is also going to bring out a little bit more of the wood grain. It's going to get into all of those cracks and crevices and it's going to just deepen the color and make it look even more old and worn. When you're done watching my video, I would love it if you would go down into the description box and click on the playlist link. There will be a bunch of YouTube creators doing this challenge with Hillary, and you're going to see a lot of wonderful inspiration for fall. My idea for this was to create a galvanized label or something to put on the front of the tool caddy. So I'm taking a couple of these Dollar Tree cookie sheets. Now, honestly, if you've ever seen or felt these Dollar Tree cookie sheets, there is no way you could bake cookies on these. They will burn in a heartbeat. I am 100% sure of that. So please don't use these for baking cookies. Get them and use them for galvanizing. As you can see, I'm cutting this one out because I don't need the edges right now, but I will keep them for future projects. Here you can see I'm just laying it on top of the front of the tool caddy to get an idea of how wide I need this piece to be. So I'm going to just leave it the width of the cookie sheet, but I'm going to fold it in half and then cut it. When you're working with these cookie sheets, it's really important to go slow and be careful. The cut edges can be sharp. I don't know that they're sharp enough to cut you, but just take your time when you're working with these. 
The other tip that I can give you is what I'm doing here. I am folding up the cut edges so there isn't a cut edge that I'm working with. This will be a folded edge. It won't hurt you at all and it really makes it safer for using this material. I'm going to fold the edges all the way around all four sides and then I'm going to press them down with the back of my scissors. Next, you'll need to smooth out all of those little bumps from the cookie sheet. You can continue to use the, your scissors if that works for you, but I prefer to use this little craft tool that is from the Dollar Tree. It actually has a razor blade in one end. I'm using the bottom part as the smoothing piece. I'm going to be doing a galvanized paint technique. Now I've never done this before. This is my very first attempt. This is the back of that little aluminum sheet. I wanted to do some testing first and I think I have something that's going to look fairly good. Using the same paintbrush that I used for the dry brushing, it already has some black on it, I'm going to pounce all over the cookie sheet and get that black pretty much covered all over the place, but not really as a solid black. Second, I'm going to use a medium gray color. You can see it on the little plastic dish at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna dab my brush in, dab some off, and then continue to pounce and get a blend of the black and the gray. And you can see already the difference that just adding the gray is making. Lastly, I'm going to add some white to give it a little bit of some highlights. And then I'm just gonna continue to blend until I get the look that I want. I was really happy with how this turned out and I can probably see myself doing a little bit more galvanization in the future. Now, because I wanted this tool caddy to look old, I'm taking some burnt umber acrylic paint and the same brush and I'm just gonna dab mostly around the edges just to give this little plate more of a rusted look. And I'll just dab a little bit through the center, but mostly around the edges. I struggled a little bit trying to figure out what I wanted to put on this little galvanized plate, but I decided just to stick with the words farm fresh. This stencil happens to be a new one that I grabbed at the Dollar Tree a while ago. I'm always on the lookout for new font styles and this was something that was fairly new and it's really thick. So I'm really impressed with the quality of this one. And from the Dollar Tree, sometimes you get good stuff and sometimes you get not so good stuff, but I lucked out with this stencil. I'm using a Dollar Tree makeup sponge and some black acrylic paint to apply the stencil. Now you'll see here at the bottom that I've started with the last letter of the word fresh because I want this to be evenly spaced. So the farm word at the top started on the left and I'm starting the fresh word on the right and working my way backwards. That way I know that I'm going to have enough space for all the letters. I'm going to be filling this tool caddy with a bunch of pumpkins and gourds. So I decided to just draw a little pumpkin down on the bottom there. And I'm also going to put the numbers 10 cents a pound on the other side of the word farm, just to give it a little bit more of a fun farm look. Pumpkins are probably the easiest thing to draw. You draw an oval, which I think everybody can probably do, which would just be the letter O. And then you draw two bananas on either side and you've got the makings of a really cute little pumpkin. I'm just adding some extra embellishments just to make it look a little bit more realistic. The black marker I'm using was just left over from my scrapbooking days. It's still working really well, so I thought I'm just gonna use what I have. I really like how this little sign turned out, but I think the letters themselves look a little too new. And since I want this to be more of an old vintage crate, I'm just taking a little tiny dry brush and dabbing it in a little tiny bit of white and then pouncing all over the letters. This is gonna give them a little bit more of a galvanized look as well and make them look like they're not so perfect. 
finally, the last step, I get to actually attach this little faux galvanized sign to the front of my caddy. I'm using these upholstery tacks that are super sharp on the end and they're kind of a blackish brown blue kind of color and I thought they would be perfect. I'm just going to put one tack in each corner and that's going to hold it on perfectly. I am really happy with how this tool caddy turned out. Look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'd like I hope you liked my top five favorite fall DIYs for 2020. If you did, I'd love for you to stick around a while by clicking that subscribe button. The two black arrows will show you exactly where to go. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.